this is exciting. It's my first presentation to a virtual conference. So I'll just jump right in. Uh, I'm going to show you some code. I'm going to show you some commands on the terminal. It's really a lightning talk more than anything. Um, but first, let me tell you why. So after I left Docker, I eventually got bored and uh, I got together with my dear friends and former colleagues, Sam Alba and Andrea Luzardi, and we're working on something new. It's called Dagger. And I'm going to tell you what it does. So we spoke to a lot of software teams asking, is there a problem that uh, you have that we can maybe help solve? And a lot of them said, deployment. Deployment's a pain, please help us fix it. And um, small teams said that, large teams said that. And the reason basically uh, deployment is a bad experience right now is the glue, right? There's a lot of choice and components out there. So if there's a lot of great ways to, the, to host your application. There's a lot of great ways to develop and test them. Um, but because your application is now using all these different components in lots of different ways, each application is very custom, you know? Um, and that means deployment is no longer a task that your standardized platform can do for you because you, there isn't a standardized platform anymore. Everyone's just gluing all these components together. So deployment is now an exercise in gluing things together. And gluing things together is hard, especially when each application does it differently. So what everyone does is write scripts. If you're a small team, you write small scripts. If you're a large team, you write large scripts and you call them an internal platform and you have a whole team dedicated to developing them, but they're still scripts. And uh, those scripts tend to um, work poorly and they tend to be slow to adapt when the underlying infrastructure and the underlying stack changes. And so you wanna change, you wanna adopt a new service or standardize across different teams, you know, change your stack. Your deployment scripts are gonna be the bottleneck. So you end up uh, not making changes that maybe are important because you're worried that deployment will be harder. It will slow down developers. So that's the pain. And we aim to solve it with Dagger by providing an alternative to these scripts um, with the programming environment that is native to um, a delivery graph because it is a graph and that's the key when you're uh, specifying how to deploy your application and how to glue all these things together you're describing a graph um, and so we chose a language Q and a, and a compute engine build kits that natively understand this concept of a graph and let you um, program it in a very powerful way in a way you cannot do with shell scripts, you cannot do with Python or uh, YAML. Um, it's just a completely new paradigm. That's what Dagger is. So let's make this more concrete with an example. I'm developing a groundbreaking app called Hello App. Uh, it says hello to the world. It's going to be huge. And here I am developing my groundbreaking application. And here I am uh, developing it, I mean running it locally with Docker Compose. Um, so here I'm testing locally, great. Now I want a staging environment. I want to see my application run in a production-like environment. So I ask my DevOps team and they tell me, well, you're in luck. It used to be we had all these complicated, brittle scripts and you would have to take 30 minutes to go and uh, get the right credentials and set it all up. But now we're using Dagger, so it's easy. Just type Dagger up. Okay, Dagger up. Staging, here I come. Bunch of stuff is output. I don't really care what it does. DevOps team says, once it's done, just query uh, web.url in the state of your environment. Uh, dagger query web.url. And it's going to give you the URL of your web service. Get that as a text value. Simple enough. Okay, so now let's go check out that staging environment. All right, here it is. Um, and so now I'm going to go modify something like hello DockerCon. Hello, DockerCon. Then I'm going to dagger up again. And that's going to be uploaded again. It looks like it's uploaded to S3, but really that's not my concern as long as it works. Well, it's the same URL. And let's just reload. And boom, it's working. Okay, so I just deployed to what appears to be an S3 bucket, but what do I know? Um, and now the DevOps team says, well, actually, right now we're sort of testing two different options for hosting. We're using an S3 bucket, but we're also evaluating Netlify. So we're looking at a migration uh, one way or the other, you know, doesn't matter. Maybe it's a multi-cloud strategy. Um, okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna um, 
look at a, a value called web provider. And if you look at it, you'll see it's set currently to S3, which makes sense, but you can change it. So now you can provide an input value, uh, a text value, and I'm gonna set it to Netlify. Now I'm gonna dagger up. Now it's deploying, it's doing slightly different things, it looks like. Uh, it's a little longer. Oh, okay, some red output. Okay, it's done. So now if I query the URL, I'm gonna get a different URL because by changing that input, I triggered a different part of the configuration from my DevOps team. And now I've got a staging environment on Netlify and it also works, great. Um, so the important thing here is I just deployed to do two completely different pieces of infrastructure. I have never used them in my life. I don't know how they work, um, but my DevOps team did and they configured it all correctly so that I can uh, deploy to, to both. All right, let's look at what happened under the scenes here. So I typed dagger up and then um, everything was deployed exactly as my DevOps team specified it, but how did they specify it? So everything happens under the hood in the .dagger directory. Uh, here's my staging environment. And an environment in Dagger has three parts. It's got state, it's got uh, user inputs, and it's got a plan, which is the source code. So the state is um, recomputed by, by Dagger every time I, I type Dagger up, and it's not committed to the repo. Um, the input values are um, managed by the Dagger tool every time I, I type dagger input something. So earlier I set the web.provider that went in there. And if you look at the contents of this file, uh, you can see this is the web.provider value I set earlier. Uh, and there's a whole lot of other stuff that was set for me by my infrastructure team. I could change it if I want, but I don't want to because I don't wanna know how the infrastructure uh, works. And so here someone set those for me you know, there's the AWS credentials, there's the Netlify credentials, there's the S3 bucket name, stuff like that. Um, all of those were um, set in, a, in such a way that secrets are securely encrypted so that this file can be safely committed and pushed. And that's done out of the box by Dagger. It uses a tool called SOPS. Um, if you're a GitFlow, sorry, GitOps fan, Basically, Dagger does GitOps out of the box and it can plug into your GitOps workflow or if you don't practice GitOps, uh, I guess you, you do now. Um, so the last part is the plan and the plan is the source code. This is where you actually write code that specifies what happens when I type Dagger up. So um, here's the source code of my staging environment. This is a whole thing. It's 41 lines of code and it's declarative. So Think of this as uh, like HTML declaratively lays out the elements in the interface. Here you use Q to declaratively lay out the elements of your delivery graph. And so here the elements are my source repository, my web service, which has a source directory, which is extracted from the repo. It's got a URL. It's got a provider which can be chosen between S3 and Netlify. And this is the field I set earlier. This is the field I queried at the end to get the URL. And here there is stuff that happens depending on the value of the provider. If, if the provider is set to S3, then you do something S3 specific. If it's set to Netlify, then you do something Netlify specific. And the Netlify specific and S3 specific work is actually um, using um, imported packages with ready to use definitions, right? So exactly like web developers have reusable web components, Dagger developers have reusable Dagger components. And that's possible thanks to Q's package system. Um, we'll get to packages in a moment. But here you can see there's a layout and then there's connections between the elements in that layout, right? So here you can see uh, web.source. This is like a superset of JSON, right? So think of it as a data a structured data tree. Um, web.source has a field called from. So web.source.from is a reference to repo, which makes sense because here you're basically creating, uh, you're setting the source directory to be a subdirectory of repo. And that's the, that's the standard layout of my directory, of my repository. Um, the URL here is defined as a string, but it's not set in the configuration, which makes sense because it's gonna be set dynamically. And we'll, we'll look at dynamic values in a minute. 
here you can see Q's schema uh, language being used to define, okay, there's only two possible values here, and this is the default value, the little asterisk. Um, and um, here, we're basically adding what looks like um, a definition for an S3 bucket here uh, or an L5 site here. And you can see the wiring, we're passing an input value to the S3 bucket that comes from the source. So we're passing the source directory to the bucket, which makes sense because it needs to upload something. Or here, we're pa passing it to the L5 site, the same thing it needs to upload. And then the other way around, we set the URL field, and this is web.url. So we're setting web.url several times, once here, just to say it's a string, and a second time here, in the case of S3, to say, well, it's actually gonna be bucket.url, the plus, uh, you know, we're gonna add that index.html, so we're doing a little bit of glue here. Uh, or it's gonna be site.url, no glue needed here. So that's the wiring up of the graph, and uh, because it's done declaratively, it can be done with way less code. Now let's look at packages. So here, my DevOps team played Lego, basically by assembling a ready-to-use S3 package and a ready-to-use Netlify package. Um, the key here, really important, is that those packages are nothing special. They're just Q using the same APIs as my main configuration. So everything that's done in those packages could be done in line in this configuration, or it could be done in a private package, just like regular code. That's really important because you've got other DevOps tools uh, like Terraform that have uh, a modular system, but uh, the module, so the providers in the case of Terraform and the declarative configuration in HCO are developed in different languages with different APIs. And you don't just go back and forth. It's not a seamless loop, right? Developing a provider for Terraform is more like developing a driver. You know, um, here it's very different. So. For example, let's look at that Netlify package. So that's actually part of the standard library dagger. Um, but again, there's nothing special about it. We're just including it for convenience. A Netlify package, this is the Netlify package. You know, it's what, 100 lines max. Um, and it, it, it exposes a reasonable definition. So this character here says, okay, this is uh, basically a template. You can merge this in multiple places and then you can fill in missing values and it will all be merged together using uh, Q's typing system. So, you know, if you provide the wrong type, then it'll fail, et cetera, et cetera. So um, a Netlify site is, uh, you know, it's what you would expect. There's a, dec a declarative interface to say, well, this is the account, you know, it's, there's a name, there's a token you gotta pass. By the way, here's the native encrypted secret type. Just like artifacts, encrypted secrets are uh, natively supported in, uh, in Dagger, and we pass them to BuildKit in the correct way because BuildKit also supports um, secrets. Um, and here's the contents. Uh, so that's the artifact that was passed here on the left. So again, the flow is now from repo to web.source to web.site.contents, which arrives here. Um, and so we, we were consume that, that graph and we'll pass it to BuildKit at Dagger up. And so then there's a flag that says, here's how to create the, you know, whether to create the site or not. Uh, okay, so that part is, you know, it's still the same stuff. Um, the magic of how actually to do the work to deploy Netlify is here. There is a low level API in the Dagger engine that allows you to control BuildKit as you see fits directly from your queue configuration. So you get the full low level BuildKit API. And here we're gonna use it through uh, uh, some helper types so that it has a nice declarative uh, feel to it. But if you wanna dig all the way down, as I'm sure some of you experts want, then all the way at the bottom, you basically have LLB in a, in, a, in a queue format. So you can you have an array of operations and you can just mess with it any way you want. So here we're, we're just gonna keep it simple. We're gonna create a container uh, this is in the Netlify package. So this is the container that actually does the work. So what this is, um, I guess here in my configuration, it's web.site.ctr. And that container, OS is you know, a package in the, in the Dagger standard library for uh, system operations. So this lets you declaratively tell BuildKit to run a container. And you can pass an image. Here, um, I'm actually using the Alpine package to declaratively configure an Alpine image. Um, so 
that's a third level of, of composition and package imports. You know, I'm, I'm importing the Alpine package here. So it's uh, declarative turtles all the way down, but um, I can specify an arbitrary um, Docker image to pull here. For, uh, and I'll, I'll show you that a little later. Uh, so here I'm declaratively saying, oh, okay, okay, install these Alpine packages with these versions. Uh, okay, then run this setup command to install NetLify, then LFI CLI, and then set these environment variables. So here, this is where the magic starts happening. Uh, you can pass any values from anywhere in your queue um, tree into the container. If you set it to env.something, it's going to be injected into the environment variables. If you pass an artifact to mount, like here we're saying mounts at slash src in the container from the con from from this value and this value contents that's the contents field here so it's an artifact so you can pass any artifact to be mounted or copied into uh, a container and then the container will just access that artifact and then you can do it the other way around you can extract a directory from the container once it's done and inject it as a dynamically produced artifact and then you can keep referencing that that's the real magic um, it's just almost infinitely um, powerful. <laughs> That's where you start playing Lego. So here, the missing piece is we're actually setting the, the actual command in a separate file just for readability. So my Netlify directory has another um, file. And here, I'm, I'm, it's a little bit of a hack. I'm basically injecting a string, which is the contents of a shell script, instead of loading it from the file system. But I could do that too. Um, and so this is just the shell, the shell script that basically calls Netlify deploy in that container. And it's, you can see it uses the environment variables that were passed on the other side, um, like the site, should I create, you know, here's the, the auth token that I'm using. Um, and then eventually I'm gonna parse the output of the Netlify CLI and I'm gonna write that to a file, slash Netlify slash URL. And then the container is gonna complete. Uh, and then back to the queue file, um, in parallel, meanwhile, it's not really and then, it's declarative, right? Uh, I also set a URL field, which is a string, uh, and I'm going to set it to the contents that I will read from this file, which I'm declaring to be loaded from the state of my container at this path. So basically, I'm declaratively extracting the contents of this file and this container, getting its data as a string, and setting it to this field. This field will then be used here set to this field by my DevOps team. And that is what I queried earlier. So you can see the full cycle now. End user, me, the developer, I set an artifact uh, at this value. It flowed through web.source to web.site.contents into the container. And then on the other end, uh, a file was written back into um, URL here, and then back to the user. And so that's um, that's how Q gets transformed to build kit operations uh, all orchestrated by by dagger. And so um, that is that is the engine that powers it all. So just to be clear, packages are a convenience, uh, just like any package system in any language. You don't need to import someone else's package to run containers in a magical way. You can do it anywhere. You can do it right here in the main configuration. So for example, if I wanted to um, run a container that says hello based on you know a, 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 an input, I could say, okay, um, there's a hello part in my graph now. There's a name uh, value, which someone will have to provide as inputs. And then I'm gonna run a container. Um, and the container will, will have an environment variable called name, which will be the value of that name field right there. And then it will run a command, which will be, you know, um, multi-line string, it will be echo, hello, name. Um, and we'll send that to, you know, a file. And then we're going to have that file loaded. from the state of the container at the path, TMP output. And um, and then we're going to set the contents of that file to a field called a message. So if I didn't screw up here, 
Um, I can go back to my repo, run dagger up. I'm just going to complain that there's a missing input because I didn't set name. Um, so let's set hello.name to DockerCon. Run dagger up. Now let's look at hello.message. Well, look at that. It says hello, DockerCon. Okay, one more. What if we added uh, support for uh, the Docker Compose file in the plan? All right, there's information in there. For example, um, my Docker Compose file knows how to build this container. Um, I could specify it separately in, in uh, my Dagger plan, but um, why duplicate information? I want to make it so that if I change my compose file, then the dagger up is also going to work. So um, let's see. Let's let's add a compose section. Uh, let's load the file. So that's just a, a file uh, loaded from our repository at the path. Docker compose dynamo. Uh, and you know what? Let's make that overridable. So if I want, I can change the path. Um, and then the spec is going to be file.read.data. So that's the, the raw contents, but I want to parse it as YAML. So I'm going to do this because it turns out that Q has uh, built in YAML support. Um, and now I can, for example, list services, which is just spec.services. Um, and that should work. Let's see. All right. Now let's query compose.services. Look at that. So hopefully you're getting a sense for what makes Dagger special. Basically, you can play Lego and assemble a delivery graph very quickly, either out of ready-to-use components or uh, by creating your own components using the low-level BuildKit API. And all of that um, can be done very quickly thanks to the Q syntax. The question is, how scalable is the Lego? I mean, this was a small, naive example. Um, how large of a tower can I build with that Lego before it starts getting wobbly and falling down? And the answer is very large. Uh, not because we're super smart, but because the people who built BillKit and Q are very smart and very experienced. And so BillKit really boils down to good design, solid engineering, and lots and lots of usage. I mean, BillKit got tested and tested and tested in production uh, via Docker Build. And so it's just rock solid scales really well. Q is newer, but um, Q is special because of who developed it. So the, the creator of Q is someone called Marcel van Lohuizen, and he works at Google. He's been working at Google a long time. He created GCL, the Google configuration language. And to this day, if you want to deploy anything on Google's internal infrastructure, you've got to write some GCL. So that's the kind of mileage that language got over the last 15 years. Um, and in those 15 years, Marcel learned a lot um, operationally, and um, the result is Q. Q is what Marcel wishes he had written the first time, and in particular, it's much more composable, and uh, it allows keeping complexity in check as your configuration grows. As you can imagine, Google configurations are very large. And so you can really tell a lot of experience and thinking uh, went into Q. So let's look at a more ambitious example. This is uh, our pivot from Hello Apps to Voting Apps. We think there's a very promising market. Uh, it's actually a fork of Docker's awesome example app. This is the Compose file. It's got a bunch of microservices, uh, database, Redis, etc. cetera. Um, if I run it in Docker Compose, it looks like this. Dogs versus cats, cats versus dogs, vote, vote. My DevOps team gave me the staging environments. And what happens when I run Dagger up is um, all the service information from the compose file is going to be loaded. Containers are going to be built from there. And then um, the voting service, for example, is going to be 
built, then uploaded to the Google Container Registry. And then the reference to that uploaded image will be injected into a generated Kubernetes configuration, which will then be uh, submitted to a GKE cluster with um, the correct image information uh, and uh, the correct ingress so that in the end I can query vote.url and um, get a nice looking little URL to a staging environment on GKE. There it is. Uh, the nice thing is, because it's wired up from the compose file, if I modify my compose file, for example, you can change environment variables here um, to change the options, like, you know, ducks versus geese. Um, it's not a very, well, not a lot of uh, suspects there, because obviously the geese win. But anyway, um, so dagger up. And so it's the same image as before. So normally, uh, BuildKit will not rebuild the image, it will not re-upload the image, but it will um, generate a new Kubernetes configuration with the new environment variables and then submit that to Kubernetes. And the result is my staging environment should be up to date. And there it is. Uh, so basically my DevOps team developed their own Docker Compose to GKE adapter all in queue powered by Dagger. Uh, and that's not all they did. They also told me, hey, you know what? We want to try AWS too because we're going for this sweet multi-cloud strategy. And so if you set, uh, kind of like before, if you set the provider for vote to uh, AWS, uh, sorry, dagger input text, if you set that value uh, to AWS and then you dagger up, then uh, the image will be built for the voting service. It's going to be uploaded to ECR, Amazon's container registry, and then it's going to generate a cloud formation stack which will uh, include the reference to that image. And that stack will configure ECS, which is Amazon's container service, so that uh, in the end I have a new staging environment running on ECS. Let's select that URL from before. Should be a different URL. And let's go check it out. There it is. Same environment uh, running on ECS. So it uh, looks like the DevOps team developed both their Compose to GKE adapter and a Compose to ECS adapter, all in queue, powered by Dagger. This is the ECS part. It specifies how to uh, generate a CloudFormation stack uh, to run um, a simple container application. This is the same thing for GKE. There's a Kube app that will generate a bunch of Kubernetes resources. And this is where it's wired together uh, for voting service. So that's all I have time to show. Um, thanks for watching. It was real fun showing you all this. We're going to open source real soon. Uh, but if you want early access, then um, hit us up.